Oi, oi, you tramps. Mind you, I want to talk. I see my, my hairiness going <laughs> you on. Look, you look shocking. Yeah, I know. I, I'm, I'm going for the for the old drunken alcoholic Trump. Pratt look. No, no, Trump. <laughs> Trump. 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 <laughs> Sorry. Let's not get them confused. Feel my mobile phone, so uh, apologies for the, the audio and the wobbly video and all that kind of stuff. I wasn't expecting to film anything here today. Although, I um, should, should have thought really, because it's a nice new trip for so you should always, should always have the camera for an, an interesting trip. Is this interesting? Uh, yes. Oh, okay. What We're in a boiler room, no less. And we have a hagger board, type A, R, C, D up front, and one, two, three, four circuits, two are sockets, one is light, one is immersion heaters. I say immersion heaters, because what we have on this fourth circuit is a four mil clip direct cable, which goes off to excuse the noise, goes off to a little sub board which has a couple of, couple of MK breakers in actually, it's a Wilex board there. And then a couple of 20 amp switches which go to a couple of immersion heaters. The plumber has been in and replaced whatever was here before with a couple of new tanks. New tanks? No tanks. <laughs> <laughs> well the old tanks that weren't tripping, but well, we we don't know what's tripping yet. But Linda's been doing some IR testing and has found something interesting on circuit four. So Linda, step up to the plate if you would. So Linda's on line and neutral with respect to earth. IR testing two fifty volts. <coughs> Computer says no. Or the Mega Seventeen series said no. Switch that to resistive if you would. Go. Let's just see if we've got a, a, a dead short there. Oh, it's looking promising. Yes, we have 140 odd hours. Resistive. Yeah, so Resistive um, no point doing an IR test really because you're going to get a bit fat zero when you've got some resistance. Well, uh, we, hang on, keep that there a sec. Keep that there because we've got two immersion heaters, haven't we? And they're both in the on position at the moment. If I turn off immersion heater eins, do you still have your resistive? Yes. Volt? Yeah, yeah, 182. Okay, and if I turn off immersion heater two, it's clear. Okay, yes. I are that again if you would please go. Uh, two six. Full scale defection. Over nine 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 million ohms. That's a shitload of ohms. Uh, so the fault would appear to be on immersion heater number two. But uh, this work gets a little bit interesting. Prepare for interesting. You brace for interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so we've taken out the thermostat. And we know the wiring itself up to here is good, but if we put on, connect to the heating element and to oist metalwork, well, you can see from your mega screen there we're getting uh, resistance, a resistive fault. There should be no resistance between live parts and earth parts here. So on both sides obviously it would be so. The element's still got continuity throughout, but it, it may, may have split or something, I don't know. Effectively we're shorting the neutral to our bonded pipe work, which means that the neutral bar back at the board, the whole neutral bar is being shorted to the bonded pipe work. If I touch the, the neutral of our circuit, the neutral bar and power on, I'm just going to ask Linda to take the neutral of our circuit and touch it to the bonded pipe work. And as you just hear, it went click. Let's do that on camera. Do that again, please, Linda. There you go. So it's the fact that it's the we have a neutral short to bonded pipe work that's causing that to trip under no load conditions. Let's pause the action there to take a graphical glance at what Ace and Ace Hole are seeing on site. This is the supply wiring, a non-RCD protected feed from DB1 wangs into the RCD main switch of the Hager board. Earthing goes back to the MET at DB1, it's being a TNS arrangement, at least on the face of it, although you pretty much have to treat anything as TNCS these days. Anywho, forgetting the other circuits, all of which are disconnected, a 32 amp breaker squats on the end of the bus bar to supply the immersion subboard. The immersion subboard splits the supply into two 16 amp circuits, each passing through a double pole 20 amp switch, which I forgot to include in the fucking picture, but we know they're there. And each 16 amp circuit feeds one of our two immersion heaters. 
Linda and I have been called in because the RCD is stripping and we've quickly uncovered a low resistance path between the neutral of our immersion heater number two and earth metalwork. With our RCD connected across four circuits, all sharing a common neutral bar, current from any one or more circuit, when energised, will leak from neutral to earth so long as immersion heater number two's double pole switch, that I forgot to show, is in the on position, along with the double pole main switch of the immersion subboard two, of course. Even if immersion heater 2's breaker is off, the neutral path would remain intact, presenting the resistive faults at the load end, in effect shorting the neutral bars in both boards to earth. Current from any of those other circuits will leak across this path to earth, causing the RCD to trip under normal powered conditions. That's by the by and no surprise, we all know how RCDs work when installed in this way. A fault on one or more circuit and you lose the bally lot. And often the circuit you think is the culprit is entirely innocent, it just happens to be drawing a load large enough to leak across a neighbouring circuit's neutral to earth fault. Among my admittedly impressive repertoire of video nasties that can be found on my website's OnlyFans page which lists all the content I've vomited out across the years, are at least 12 presentations on common or garden RCD trippery. What's perhaps of more interest here, and indeed is the point of this very vloggy or bollocks, is that today's RCD happens to be tripping while all independent circuits are both de-energised and disconnected, at least aside from our Duff Neutral. What savoury sorcery is this, I hear you cry? How is the RCD tripping with all loads off? Well, here's what I think is happening. Let's simplify this migraine-inducing diagram and disregard immersion heater 1's wiring, as that's all dandy and irrelevant. In the on-site scenario that's keeping Linda and me from getting to the pub, we can disconnect the line and CPC from immersion heater 2 and switch off all our MCBs, including even those in our immersion subboard. Yet so long as the neutral of our immersion heater remains connected with its resistive fault to earth, we will not be able to keep our RCD in the on position for long, despite there being no load at all on this boiler room board. This boiler room is part of a much larger electrical installation, and if we go back to DB1 upstream of our subboard to measure the leakage current there, we can see there's more than enough pissing down our earthing and any bonded parallel paths to trip out a 30 milliamp RCD. We've done a lot of work at this site to remove leakage issues by fixing a whole bunch of faults. Indeed, DB1 is now fully RCBO'd up the wazoo, aside from a couple of distribution feeds including that to our boiler room, so this current is probably small cumulative leakages that nonetheless add up on a large three-phase panel. We know that some of the leakage current is flowing through our bonded copper piping, and so long as there's a low resistance connection between that metalwork and the neutral of our immersion heater, some of that current is going to pish back up the neutral path and feed back through our RCD, which imbalances it as there's zero current flowing through the line at this time. Therefore it duly, albeit perhaps unexpectedly, trips off even with everything else disconnected and it's seemingly being under no load. I can demonstrate this here in the cave. My RCD is on, all dependent circuits are off, and it sits here quite happily energised like a smug prick. If we place a leakage clamp onto its neutral, then short the neutral and earth bars to represent a resistive fault like Linda and I were seeing on site, we see a number appear on the clamp. In my case around 23 milliamps, which already puts it well into the 16 to 30 milliamp trip window as there's no current online, so we're already imbalanced. I guess that's background leakage from my wider electrical installation and will vary depending on what's in use. Normally this paltry current pisses harmlessly to earth, it's mere milliamps and is spread across a plethora of circuit ways, so nothing in my site's main consume unit or here in my test rig is taxed or tripping. Nonetheless, with an earth to neutral short now in place, some of this leakage current will be pissing off my RCD, and if it hits high enough, then the RCD will trip. Currently sitting at 20 milliamps at the moment. Tell you what, uh, let's stress it a little bit further, shall we, fools? This LED lamp is nothing to do with my RCD or its dependent circuits. Instead it's powered by the MCB in this circuit away which lacks leakage protection. If I power this lamp on, its return current is split over the RCD neutral and earth because of our resistive fault between our two bars here. Most of the current is going to be flowing down the earth, uh, but some of it is going to be backfisting through the impedance of my RCD's neutral here. If we up the ante by sticking in something slightly more powerful, like this CFL lamp here, we should probably stress the RCD enough that it trips off. There she goes. Leakage current being backfed via a neutral to earth short is one way you'll find an RCD tripping under apparent no load conditions, but pucker up your sphincters because I have another one for you, and that's when you introduce a second earthing source with this same kind of fault. 
consider the same scenario, an immersion heater with a neutral to metal work short, but this time with no bonding to the water pipe work. Should the CPC be disconnected, then our water pipe, tank and heater become separated from our earth bars and are now only earth via the copper water pipe physically going into the ground locally. And that can have a potential difference of up to 18.4 volts relative to the supplier's earth. I don't know where this figure comes from. I think it might be in the ESQCR regulations, but I nicked it from this eFix video, which rather handily also saves me from having to draw a graphic. Yeah, boy! Outside Shea Savory, I have an earth rod for my defunct EV charge point installed into one of these crappy rod covers because I'm a cheapskate. On a customer site, I would and do install proper pits, so fuck you and your comments, haters. This rod is not connected back to my main earthing terminal, so it's reference to the physical earth my house happens to have it, maybe slightly out to the earth reference of my rig, which itself traverses off to a local transformer located god knows where on my estate. Looking on the open infrastructure map, here's me with my solar PV, so I'm probably fed by the distribution station at Mollard Drive or over here at Verdon Close. I'm going to connect one end of my wander reel to my rod <laughs> and wander back to the cave. Walk this way. This time there's no link between my RCD's neutral bar and the main earth bar connected back to my supply. If you'll recall, what I'm simulating here is a short between a localised earth and my RCD's neutral. My wander lead going back to my independent rod <laughs> rod could introduce a different potential to what the neutral of my RCD has been referenced to. If I touch my rod to my neutral bar, we have an instant trip. Now here I'm not sure if the trip current that's upsetting this thing is being sourced from my installation and is leaking out to the rod to cause this instant imbalance, or if there's something buzzing on my rod that I'm introducing back into my supplier's earth via the RCD. You let me know what you think. Anyway, this is a quick and dirty vid to demo two ways of tripping a no-load RCD, which you may once in a blue moon experience on site for some head scratching. If you come across such a fault in the wild, look for an earth to neutral short and pay close attention to bonded services such as gas cookers, water heaters, combi boilers, gas fireplaces and the like. Linda and I performed a basic resistance test to ensure our pipework was bonded somewhere to our supplier's earth, so we knew we were looking here at leakage backfeeding into the RCD on this one. But enough ado, let's go back out to the action, such as it is, out on site. I said it was exciting, it's not exciting. It's a lot of fucking nonsense. But uh, Linda's now going to redress that board. Are you ready to redress? Because I'm going to put on RCB operation. And then the plumber's going to, have to come and sort out this immersion heater because he put it in. We're just here to find the fox, motherfuckers. Give me a nice smile. <laughs> Back off, David. There's a lot of packing up going on. There is. There is. Linda's, Linda's done a, a diligent job here of converting this board to RCBO operation. Oh, hey? Oh. Like oh. <laughs> oh, it's neater than your board. Yeah, well, I probably was bored neater than me because I'm a hairy old tramp, as you can see. And it's an interesting light bulb in there. It's a really interesting light bulb. Oh my god. Yeah, what do you think about that? Goodness knows if that's. Uh, Safe or sane. <laughs> anyway, our work here is done. This is the plumber's problem now. Uh, we've verified that immersion heater 2 has resistive short to earth, and uh, that's because of the water bonding being present that uh, it causes the RCD to trip off whenever the RCD is energized. Hmm. Is, it, is it going to the pub time? You know what? I do believe it is, old girl. I do believe it is. Let's. Go and have a, uh, a sneak, sneaky sniff there. <laughs> that was all, it's just a nonsense video, this. Nonsense. Probably won't get published. It will? Nah. No! Probably not. Oh, David, so, don't! So, so you won't have seen it. <laughs> None of you have seen this. What a waste! <laughs> Let's go! Shout outs from the hot tub at the Lake District. Dave Frizz, glad you found the test rig video uh, handy. Keep up the good work. Chin chin.
John Cooper, Big J, says good update on the AFDD saga. I'm not sure how you could all agree with that, but uh, an update nonetheless. Thanks for tuning in and for the beers. Thank you to Alan Nobbs, purveyor of fine boozy drinks. God, you get rings at this place, I tell you. Who'd have thought? Who'd have thought? Drinks would cost so much here. 12 quid for a large glass of wine, not that this is one. Shocking. How the other half live, eh? Bastards. Motherfucker. Alpacas. Curious things, aren't they? It's like a giraffe had it off with a sheep or something. Well, Mr. Humbug, there for you. Enjoy. Thanks very much for your uh, monthly period contribution once again. Have a... Uh, a fluffy woolly thing on me, old chap. Look at that, it looks like a Windows 7 desktop picture. Let's flip it around the other way and give a shout to Jay Sargent on the monthly period list. Thank you for your regular contribution, Jay. Most kind of you. And you're right, Linda is a clumsy twat. How someone can get five stitches in her finger cleaning the toaster. I don't think any of us will ever know. There's going to be crows and noisy, but there's some, uh, some quieter burbs for you, Sir James Hook. Not the James Jeffrey Hook of before, but, uh, but Sir Jim, from down under. Enjoy the birds. These fucking crows are doing my head in. I feel like this guy's doing crowd control. Get back, get back. But my thanks to Test Gear Junkie for another monthly period contribution. Cheers, kids. I should put it to misuse, of course. Oh, that's it for the Lake District coffee shouts. Most tranquil. It's just this old man spoiling the view. Otherwise, there's nobody here. Might just a. Take the kit off and have a little bit of a dip. Maybe not on camera.